In this video, we will use Autodesk Fusion 360's part optimization simulation to create a connector. Our finished part will look something like this. We'll have some connector points on the top connecting down to a single location on the bottom and using the part optimization tool to create the geometry. We will start by creating a new design. Let's create a cylinder. We'll select the ground plane, select the center, type in a diameter of 150 millimeters and click enter. Then we can set the height of the cylinder to 100 millimeters and say OK. Let's create our connection points on the top of our cylinder by creating additional cylinders. Create cylinder. Select the top of our existing cylinder. Select a center point. We'll do 20 millimeters and we'll do a height of 10. Because we use join when we created the second cylinder, we still only have one body. So let's create a circular pattern and we will pattern our faces because it is only one body. These two faces will select an axis which can be our vertical axis or we can click the circle top of the cylinder. We can adjust the quantity I'll do 5, say OK. We'll set our visual style to shaded with visible edges to get a better view. Now let's create an additional cylinder at the bottom. Click the base of the original cylinder, click the center point. We'll do a 50 millimeter diameter, click enter, and set the height to 10 millimeters. Say OK. We can think of this shape as the boundary for our shape optimization. This is the maximum boundary that Fusion can use to create its critical load path shape. In addition to this boundary, we also need to think of negative spaces where we may not want material. For example, we might need a location to insert a screwdriver, or we might want holes to continue all the way through the model. We will start by sketching a circle. Orbit to the bottom of the model, select the base face, then set a circle diameter 25 millimeters. Stop the sketch and use the modify press pull to select the circle and drag it up through the center of the model. We can also exchange the distance extent to all to make sure it goes all the way through the model. Verify that it does and we'll say OK. Now we've got a hole through the center of this model. Let's create a few more holes. Sketch, circle, center diameter circle. Click these top cylinders. Click the center point, And we'll set the diameter to 10 millimeters and click enter. Stop the sketch. Modify, press and pull. Select that inner circle, drag this down, and set this to all. Verify it goes all the way through the model. Click OK. And now, seeing that we still have just one body here, we want to create another circular pattern and pattern these faces on the inside of this void. Now we'll select the axis, which is our circle, and we'll change the quantity up to 5 and say OK. And we've repeated that circle throughout the model with holes going all the way through. Now is a great time to save, so we'll save our design and give this a name. Now let's switch from model workspace over to the simulation workspace. When prompted, select shape optimization and create study. The first step is to select a study material. As we want to 3D print this part, we will switch the study model to ABS plastic and say OK. Next, we will add a constraint and a structural constraint. We'll select this very bottom face of the model and set the structural constraint to fixed and say OK. Let's return to our home view and the next step is to add structural loads. I will click one of the tops of these cylinders and add a load. I'll change the units to pounds of force. I will add 20 pounds of force. 
I will also change the direction type from normal to angle. And I will set this direction vertical and say OK. I'll now repeat that for the remaining cylinders. I can use a uniform load or I can switch it up if I can assume that one of these points has a greater load or a load in a different direction. When I'm done, I'll have five structural load cases, one load for each connection point. If we had more than one body, we would then generate contacts. However, with one body, we can skip this step. Next, we see some display options. We can skip these for now and go right to the Shape Optimization menu. The first option is Preserve Region. We will locate the center of our model, then change our boundary shape to Cylinder. Adjust this green boundary to cover all of our connection points. This will help Fusion 360 understand that we want to preserve all of these connection points. We'll repeat the shape optimization for the base of the model. Next, we will adjust the shape optimization criteria. Let's change our target mass to 50% and say OK. When Fusion 360 solves this simulation, it's going to use what's called a mesh model. Let's go ahead and generate that now. Let's click Solve and Generate Mesh. We might notice that our display has switched over to the mesh view. This mesh is important. You can see the number of faces determine the quality of our final shape. I notice that my mesh is a little bit too big. Each one of these mesh areas represents a flat face, and these faces are too few to make a good curve. So I'm going to go to my Manage Settings, find my Mesh Settings, and make the mesh just a bit smaller, you know, two clicks to the left. I don't want to go down under 3% usually because it's going to create quite a small mesh and increase my solve time. I'll go ahead and say OK here. I notice that my mesh now has a warning because it's out of date. I need to right click and generate mesh. Now my mesh is smaller and I'll get a better curve. Next up, I can pre-check my solve. This lets me know if the study has all the information required. If something is missing, go back left to right and make sure you followed each one of these steps. With the green check mark, I'm good to click Solve. I will let this solve on the cloud and click Solve One Study. While the solve is progressing, I get a job status window to let me see the status. When the simulation is complete, I can click Close. Here I can visualize my results. I can adjust this slider to determine which parts of this model are load path critical. As I melt the model down, I'm left with my final shape. The next step is to promote this shape back to the model environment. To do that, I go to the results menu and select promote. The default option is to promote the mesh object to our existing simulation model. But we don't want that. We want to change this and send it back to our model workspace. Then click OK. Here in the model workspace, we can see our original boundary and compare it to our generated shape. I'll take our original boundary and adjust its opacity down to 50%. This helps me to compare the two. This model is great, but I want to make a few edits to smooth out the geometry. Let's right click on the mesh body and select Edit. I'll notice that Fusion 360 has quite a few modification tools for mesh bodies. Let's first try the smooth operation. In this operation, I can select faces I would like to smooth by clicking and dragging and painting those faces blue.
I can adjust the smoothing amount and then click OK. I can repeat this process to get the desired shape I want. Sometimes it helps to adjust my visual style to shade it and turn on some effects, such as object shadow, maybe anti-aliasing and environment though. As I'm smoothing, I want to be careful to smooth the areas that are rough, but not distort certain objects that are doing well, like my connection points. One tool I find useful is a section analysis tool. I need to make sure my original body is turned off. Right click, right click and edit the mesh, then under inspect find section analysis. I usually turn on the origin and select the ground plane for my section analysis or one of the vertical planes. I can then drag this section analysis tool to get to the inside parts of the model so that I can more easily smooth them. When I'm finished with my section analysis, I can simply hide it. When I'm happy with my mesh, I can click Finish Mesh. Now we can create some additional details for this model. I'll turn my reference body back on. And now I'm going to create another cylinder. I'll create this cylinder at one of my attachment points. My original cylinder was 20 millimeters. I'll make this one a little bigger. I'll do 25. Instead of join, I'm going to change this to new body. Now I'll say OK. And I'll use the press and pull command to grab the base of this cylinder and drag it down a bit into the model. Say OK. Now I can create a hole. I will create the hole on top of the cylinder. I do that by clicking the top of the cylinder, then finding the center point of the hole and dragging it to this white dot that appears. You can see it snaps right to that center point. With the hole in place, I'll set the hole tap type to tapped. And now I can pick an isometric profile. I can set the size to 10 millimeters. And I can set the threads to be modeled. Now I'll say enter. And I'll notice that I have real threads modeled here in the cylinder. This time, I have a separate body here, so I can create a pattern with that body. Create, pattern, circular pattern, change the pattern type to bodies, select this body too, select my axis, which is the circle, and adjust this to 5. I may want to go back and add a fillet to that body. I can roll my timeline back prior to the pattern, come in, add a modify fillet, I'll fill out the top edge and bottom edge of that cylinder, give it a 2 millimeter fillet, and say OK, and send the timeline back to where I was. You'll notice that the fillet now propagates to all five of these connector points. Let's create one more at the base of the model. Down at the base, I will create a cylinder. I'll select the bottom plane, click the very center. Originally, I had a 50 millimeter diameter. To make this a bit bigger, I'll do 55 millimeters and hit enter. I'll drag this arrow up into the model to overlap a bit. I'll do minus 15 millimeters. And instead of cut, I want this to be a new body. Now at this point, I'm going to turn off my reference. I might call this reference body to make this clear. And each of these can be connectors. And the base can be our base connector. I'm going to create the center hole. I'll create a sketch this time. Circle, center diameter circle. Select this base connector, click the center, drag out to my 25 millimeters, hit stop sketch, 
Now I can use modify, press and pull to drag this up through that entire base connector shape. I'll make sure the operation is set to cut and click OK. Let's turn off the mesh body to see this more clearly and the reference body. Now I'll create some threading on the outside of this base. I'm going to change the designation down to 5 by 2 and I'll check the box for models. Now I'll say OK. Now I have all my connection points and the threads are modeled. However, they are currently separate bodies and they're different model types. I have a mesh body, first of all. Then I have these connectors, which are all solid B reps. So let's edit this mesh body. Here in the Create menu, I can take a B rep and turn it into a mesh. I'll start by selecting all of my connectors. Now notice I have some options here. I can set the refinement to high, medium, and low. I probably want at least a medium refinement because I want to 3D print this and have the threads actually work. If I'm curious as to how this will work out, I can turn on Preview Mesh. So will take a moment to process and then I can see how this mesh is going to work with these threads. This looks good to me, so I'm going to click OK. Now I can see the conversion has taken place and now they are all mesh bodies. What I can do now is combine them all into one mesh body. Under Modify, I'll select Merge Bodies. I'll select this first body and grab the connector. I don't need to keep the tool bodies because I want to combine them all into one mesh. Then I'll say OK. I'll right click and repeat this process for each connector and for the base connector. When I'm happy with a mesh, I can select Finish Mesh. Now I can apply a material. I like the paint materials. And check out my work. Make sure everything works good. All the holes are connecting all the way through where I need them to go. And I have all my threading done. When I'm happy with this, it's time to print. I can select Make, 3D Print. This time, I'm only going to select this one mesh body. I notice that my options for the mesh are grayed out, and that's because I've already created a mesh with a well-defined pattern. I don't need to remesh this again, so the option is grayed out. And now I can send this to a print studio, or I can uncheck Send a Print Utility and make an STL file for 3D printing. Thank you.